G'day guys, welcome to another episode here today. The plan is we're going to be comparing two different workflows out of MLV app into DaVinci Resolve and uh, I think you'll be surprised which one actually ends up being the best in my opinion. So if you uh, have seen any of my videos in the past, you know that I am typically at the moment putting the EOSM footage into MLV app and just putting it straight into a log C conversion and then sending that to uh, DaVinci Resolve and I've just got a log C to RE lot there which I really love the rendering uh, that I get from it but somebody posted in the comments on one of my videos a couple of uh, weeks ago asking why don't I export as cinema DNG because then it just gives me raw latitude in uh, DaVinci Resolve when I'm editing that and so I wanted to test out that suggestion today uh, to see which workflow kind of works better not just necessarily for latitude in post but across the board in terms of size in terms of export time and in terms of latitude in post so if that sounds like something you're interested in stick around let's check it out Let's jump into the latitude that we can get using uh, Cinema DNG instead of uh, Log C uh, as ProRes out of um, MLV app. So what I've got here, okay, is this first clip here is a uh, Log C um, ProRes clip. Um, very simple kind of uh, workflow here in terms of um, color grading this. Normally what I'll just do is um, pull this in uh, and then just go to the straight RE look. Uh, I really like that. It's very simple. It's very clean. Um, it's not oversaturated. It's not undersaturated. It's kind of right in the middle there, which I really like. Um, an issue I came across with the Cinema DNG is that when I put it into, um, into Resolve, it kind of gave it this hyper sort of uh, hyper saturated, hyper kind of over the top look, which I don't really like. Uh, and you can kind of you know, adjust that to taste to kind of get it somewhere near, um, you know, somewhere near that, um, but didn't really like it. So that's, as I was going through, I was like, you know what, don't really like that about Cinema DNG. Um, I found it kind of hard to actually match just the quick standard look that we get from Log C into uh, Rec 709 here. Uh, but something that I want to run you through, which is a huge benefit of Cinema DNG, is uh, highlight recovery. So you can see in this shot here, there is just no chance uh, at all that we'll be getting these highlights back. Uh, so the first uh, Cinema DN uh, DNG clip we have here, uh, this is putting uh, the color space into Blackmagic Design. Now you can see the highlights, um, uh, to reduce the highlights here uh, using Highlight Recovery. Uh, it, you know, I've only gone down 16, uh, negative 16, and I've got pretty much all of it back. You can see there's a minor little clipping part just in the, in the center here, but we're getting detail back here and everywhere. Um, and when you just pay attention to the um, kind of gradation from blue to white here and see how that changes over in the uh, next Cinema DNG set of footage. So just first of all, the uh, latitude that you get given back here, you can see just by clicking Highlight Recovery, we're getting a huge amount of detail and information back in there, which is a pretty awesome uh, reason to use Cinema DNG uh, for the EOSM. Now, if we flick over here to the um, Rec. 709 color space, putting it straight into that through um, through Resolve, uh, and then look at the highlights here. I've had to really crank those highlights to get them back. Um, so, and then you look at the blue gradation here, it's a lot worse um, than the um, Black Magic Design color space uh, one. So, what I want to do essentially share in this section is that um, I think the highlight recovery tool is something that essentially makes using Cinema D worthwhile, uh, using Cinema D. DNG, goodness me, worthwhile um, because we're getting that back. And uh, all I did here to get a similar look in terms of color to, uh, it's a little bit warmer, but uh, similar color to what I was liking in the ProRes is just uh, did a color transform here into Log C and then dropped the Log C lot uh, LUT onto it. It looks fairly similar, so fairly easy. Um, and yeah, I guess that is a pro for Cinema DNG in terms of the highlight recovery. But um, you know, if you do go that route, you gotta massage a little bit more to get that sort of natural RE look that is so easy with the Log C process. So let's move on to file sizes. 
All right, so moving on to the next uh, criteria for whether or not I should be using DNG or log C out of MLV app, uh, and that is file size. So for example, I just want to uh, talk about the differences in file sizes between what we have here in log C and what we have here in um, Cinema DNG. So um, unfortunately, uh, the Cinema DNG file is roughly around 10 times larger than the log C file. So uh, in my opinion, that is uh, probably the backbreaker of this whole comparison. Um, I mean, this file is 35 megabytes. This one is 280 megabytes and uh, it just it just doesn't seem to work very well uh, when you're shooting a lot uh, in, in Cinema DNG. And um, I'm going to be releasing a video uh, a bit later about this, but my whole kind of ethos with this uh, with the EOSM has become, uh, you know, it needs to be as uh, as minimalist and uh, and lightweight and easy to use and easy to edit um, as possible because I've got all these other cameras that I use for um, you know all these other reasons so why do I use the the EOSM I'm probably not going to use it on a professional shoot um, but I do love to bring it with me and just capture you know small memories um, and the ability to shoot that in RAW at 14 bit get that color depth is amazing um, so unfortunately when it comes to the size comparison uh, the file size comparison probably going to have to give it to obviously uh, log C here and that may be the final reason that trumps All right, so we're going to be checking out now whether or not the uh, export time from MLV app plays any consideration into whether or not we should be using Cinema DNG or Log C out of um, out of MLV app. So, uh, for those of you who've seen some of my videos before, you know that generally the way I just deal with my footage in here is I just click here, put it into Log C. I'll generally just give it a little bit of sharpening here, uh, and then essentially what I do is copy what I've just done and then put it onto all the other clips here. So uh, we're just gonna render this out now. The speed out of MLV app is um, significant if you're looking to uh, be able to get your footage into a format uh, that is, you know, the best option to edit uh, very quickly. Cinema DNG is definitely the winner for that. Um, you know, you could get through um, three or four clips uh, of this length in the time it takes to put out a log C. So if speed out of MLV app is something that you uh, are really looking for, then definitely uh, DNG is the way to go. All right, so I pretty interesting result. All right, so pretty interesting results there to see uh, what actually offered more latitude. Now, obviously, Cinema and DNG, Cinema. Um, DNG gives you more latitude in post, okay? But with regards to the sizes of the files, I just don't think it's worth it. I think the log C conversion is super quick, super simple. Uh, chuck, put it into log C, put a little bit of sharpening on it, and then get it into Resolve and, and, put, and put that RE light on. And you know, that is such a quick process uh, and it gives you such a good looking image. And part of the original barriers for me to, for using the EOSM more was that, um, you know, you're working with RAW, it takes a long time, all this sort of stuff. So I'm sticking with the log C, um, but yeah, really thank you for your uh, suggestion, uh, whoever it was, Mystery Man. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking out this video. I've got another one coming up about the, in my opinion, the most budget uh, sort of friendly minimalist uh, uh, set up on the EOSM. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, keep an eye on my channel because that will be dropping in the next few weeks. So thanks for your support and I uh, hope you have a great day.